I think it takes 8,000 liters of water to produce a pair of jeans. And uh, Pakistan makes a lot of cotton and exports it. It's one of its main export industries. So in a way, when these goods are being exported from Pakistan, it's not just the goods, it's Pakistan's water being exported. We as a research institute for water and waste management, we thought we could help finding solutions for the global textile industry. So we started a project in Pakistan. Pakistan is the fourth largest producer of cotton in the world. And most people don't know it, but the jeans that I'm wearing and also the towel that I used in the morning, they are produced in Pakistan. When we arrived, we were happy to find colleagues, uh, scientists and industry partners that joined us on a journey from cotton fields to textile industry and wastewater treatment. So Pakistan is blessed with rich surface water as well as groundwater resources which have been used extensively without proper management on a sustainable way. Uh, the major source of surface water in Pakistan is Indus River and its tributaries which emerge from northern part of the country. In Pakistan, groundwater provides the second largest contributor to total water availability which is a major factor in raising agriculture production. In agriculture areas, the surface water is not available throughout the season, therefore we have to rely on groundwater. However, due to excessive and uncontrolled groundwater use for agriculture and textile sector is causing, causing lowering of groundwater in major part of the country. But it's not a water crisis that has arisen this year or now, it's a water crisis that's been present for many years now and only getting worse. Uh, there's no singular water crisis because water operates at so many levels. It can be drinking water, it can be irrigation water, it can be water from dams. So water comes at us and is used in different forms and there are crises at each one of these scales. So there's a shortage of storage water, so that affects agriculture and irrigation. But there's also a crisis in water quality, uh, which is polluted water interfering with regular drinking supplies and causing a huge public health emergency. There's also water shortage issues in places, rural areas in Pakistan, where people aren't getting adequate drinking water. And um, so this, you know, it, it's, it's multiple levels of issues playing out at the same time. So there will be, there will be water stress. And uh, we see the major task in assisting farmers on how to minimize the impact of these non-avoidable water stress on, uh, on the yield. Yeah. Taking the, the perspective of the water footprint is uh, maximizing water productivity. Because for us these schedules are numbers on the paper, but for them it is, uh, it is their livelihood. <laughs> water deficiency but we actually had a hell of water which is being wasted we had a this source enough it is a very difficult for us to how to treat i have shown you my field that all is lying vacant we have no crop this year only due to this water this water deficiency nha which has made problem for us we are facing that problem <laughs> Hi, I am Junaid Maksud and we are uh, very happy in working with you and learn a lot from this work. They can also, you know, learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, learn. Bye, bye, bye. <clears throat> Uh, these instruments have three sen four sensors for soil moisture measurement. Uh, these are installed at different depths. They will measure the soil moisture in the soil. Also, there are temperature sensors. They are measuring the temperature and on the above radiation sensor. 
it will measure the incoming radiation from the sun. Then we have to install all the instruments on the pole and then we have to take the data with use of laptop and it was a good. What we envisage through this partnership is we want a long standard relationship between Germany and Pakistan in the context of wastewater treatment. The reason being that generally textile wastewater is complicated so we want that whenever we are giving a solution it should be first verified and only based upon results we are able to give a very precise solution. My name is Amit Shahzad. I am a PhD student of NERST and here I am working with Sharad on the anaerobic pilot plant. Anaerobic means that the bacteria inside the reactor live without oxygen. So basically we are feeding them with the wastewater. So the wastewater is high on organics, especially the starch from um, the sizing material that is used on the textiles. They are digesting the food that we give them, the starch, to methane, which we catch in our biogas bags. And from there, you can use it as a biofuel. The bacteria are now kind of our pets that we are yes. trying to grow and keep happy. Yes. Uh, like with every pet, you have to give them what they need. And in our case, it's um, the pH levels should be in a certain yes. range. The temperature should not be too high, not be too low. Um, they should have another food, which is basically the starch from the um, sizing material. Actually, bacteria is like a child, so they need special care. Yeah. Yeah, at the start. Every time it's needed, we get inside the, the textile treatment plant to get a new batch of wastewater uh, from the first part of the bleaching machine where the uh, sizes are washed off. It's crazy hot, but actually that's good for the bacteria, so uh, I mean we have to stand through it. Now that we have shown that it, it works in principle, we will uh, change the, <coughs> the parameters a little from time to time to understand uh, what would be the optimal conditions for a, um, for a large scale plan. If we are not able to make a tea here, then they will not give us the tea. Anymore. They will. Yeah. And they will what if we can make tea? Then uh, double tea daily. Yeah. We today we also burned the biogas and we made a tea on it and it was good. First time. Yeah, yes. first time. Yes. With the bleaching waste water, we make the biogas and we made a tea with that gas by burning. Yeah. yeah, so I, I was actually surprised that it worked on the first Yeah, yeah. all night. the people were, were surprised there yeah. when we were burning the gas and we were making the tea. What, what is inside? <laughs> 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 it's a fire. 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 It's a f
It's all about the symbols, isn't it? <laughs> Seeing is believing. This is such a pilot plant. If it becomes fully successful, we hope we will install uh, this type of plant on full scale and we will uh, get benefit of uh, not only COD reduction but also the uh, generation of biogas. We only treat less than 8% of our total wastewater generation. So that is uh, quite low. This is not a problem we can now put on the back burner. It is something that is right in front of us and that is why people have a concern today. We want access to safe water and that is immediately linked to the, you know, all the aspects to the pollution, to the available water, to the safety. The environmental standards that Pakistani companies are complying with are standards largely imposed on them by their European or international buyers. Because at the end of the day, money does talk, and if money dictates that certain environmental standards be maintained, then Pakistani industrialists do understand that they have to deliver on that.